This message was brought to you by Hustlers University. Sign up today where your real education begins. Hey, what's going on? This is Glendon. And I wasn't going to do any more videos today. Got all kinds of stuff to do. But I could not resist this. In August, eBay cut 15,000 purportedly underperforming eBay sellers. I did a video about that. And what did I tell you? What did the sun tan Superman drop on you in August? I said that before the holidays, and today is October 10th, we're on the eve of the, well, actually, we're in the holiday season. Like, if you're trying to get ready for the holiday season right now, actually, you are fucked because you should have been ready already. <laughs> So here it is just before the Holloway season and eBay is cutting people again. What? I, really? Are you surprised? Are, I mean, seriously, are you surprised? Let me just go ahead and drop some stuff for you. This is from e-commerce bytes. Been um, checking them out since got like forever. I think they're the oldest in terms of eBay reporting. Some eBay users are reporting that there is another seller crackdown taking place on this week. I'll skip over some stuff, you know, going on. Talked about August suspension. Arita wrote this afternoon, judging from a lot of the post in Cello Central this morning, there is there's a general consensus that a new purge of small sellers may have started at eBay. While eBay sets out seller performance standards, sellers are not clear on the criteria eBay uses when it takes action, such as the August crackdown. I'll, I'll leave you a link. You know, you can go. It's on the first page of uh, e-commerce bytes. I won't read the whole thing to you. But I'm just um, trying to let you know that if you keep doing this, and there are people who have argued with me about this for damn near four going on five years eBay is not your business. When you sell on eBay, you are a part of their business. Now, understand, eBay is a necessary evil. I'm not going to say, hey, you know, you know, it's a necessary evil. But the thing is, if you're selling on eBay and you're selling on Amazon, you need to have other income streams. Preferably your own website should be your number one income stream for the following reasons. You own it, you control it, you can do what you want on it, and you cannot be what I call rating bombed. There are people that will go out in internet forums and just give you a poor rating. They'll attack your business because they don't like you. The standards, the, the forum standards are so loose that essentially a posse of people that you just pissed off and Maybe you put up a Republican post on your Facebook page and pissed off a group of people or you expressed something that was unpopular. These people can then extract a pound of flesh from you by using the feedback system of Amazon and eBay and toast your business. If for no other reason than the fact that you could be set up so easily, I've had it done to me. I know people that have been persecuted here on YouTube. Folks were fucking with their business because they didn't like them. That's how childish and juvenile that a lot of people are becoming today. That, you know, if you disagree with someone, you disagree with someone. That's your right as a human being. No problem. But when you take that disagreement to the level where you start fucking with people's money, messing with their family income because you don't like them because you're a little child. That's the reason that stuff I do and I have other income streams I don't even talk about because I know how people are. I mean, and you know, but get to the core. Be very careful with putting all of your bags, uh, all of your eggs in one eBay basket. There are people who are eBay top heavy. I will tell you this because this is what's going to happen. This uh, culling of eBay sellers is going to be larger. I think they got rid of more than 15,000, but how would we know? Is eBay's platform. They could pull a number out their hat and say, hey, it was 15. It could have been 30. It could have been 40. It could have been 50. We would not know. 
that is one of the problems with being part of someone else's system. Uh, we're having this conversation about Amazon's Create Space program the other day in one of my uh, writing groups. And, you know, I had some issues in 2009. I had some, you know, where the reporting was wrong. To Amazon's credit, they have an internal audit system. They fixed it. And then I got 1400 bucks a few months later, an adjustment. But in my mind, I'm like, I can't, I'm not really comfortable not knowing if this accounting is right. It freaked me the fuck out. Because if you're going to sell online, there's certain numbers you need to know. You need to know who's coming to your website. Where are they coming from? What you, There's so many things that you cannot get from these sites that you need to be an effective seller. And once again, it's because you're part of their machinery. Now, with the Amazon thing, people are like, oh, they have no reason to screw. <sighs> when you do not have access to the most crucial data, you're at the disadvantage. Let's take the morality out of it, or good, bad, wrong. Uh, I don't think Amazon is like trying to screw anyone or rip people off. I don't think that's the issue at all. I think that the create space side of the business is low priority compared to the other imprints, Kindle. It's just a low priority business and it shows. I mean, I sold like 33 books in a week and I called up and the lady was like, wow, you sold a lot of books. It's like, it's just 33 books. You know, this was years and years ago. And I mean, she and I talked. So that told me that most of their authors are not selling a lot of books. Now, from a business standpoint, I totally understand. Why would you dedicate resources to a dog that's dying? It doesn't make any sense. So I totally get that. But if it's your business and you're dependent upon that third party platform for report generation statistics and actually cut you a check or make you an ACH deposit, you need to know this stuff. You know, I mean, this is not, you know, hate or this is stuff you need to know. And. As this conversation was going on in another Facebook group, I was just like, I am so glad that I can sell on my own. I don't need Amazon to sell. Uh, you know, my uh, Amazon checks are minuscule compared to what they used to be. Uh, Kindle, same thing. I have switched and pushed. And, you know, because people are like, well, YouTube's a third party platform, which it is. But it's not a third party platform that I'm dependent to cut me a check. Because the thing is, YouTube gives you way more leeway than Amazon or eBay. Because Amazon and eBay have uh, death, the final death penalty. You do one wrong thing, get kicked off, you're gone forever. YouTube, you do something, you get your channel deleted, you can create another Gmail account, create another channel. If really you could get away with so much on YouTube, if you create a channel, don't put ads on there, you could do what you want. You don't put ads on there. You don't put copyrighted content. You don't use other people's music. You can do so much. And they're not going to mess with you, bother you. People can flag all day long. As long as you're, you're within the rules and you're not doing anything crazy or promoting hate speech, you can do what you want. So in that regard, it is vastly different than eBay and Amazon. Because, you know, people want to make that same comparison. I put up content that generates an income for me through my own platforms, my own devices. I have merchant accounts and other things and then you know with adsense and if you notice i'm really not putting a lot of uh videos up with ads anymore i'm kind of actually moving away from that because it doesn't really benefit me the way it used to because when they changed the program a few last year it the difference is amazing it is amazing but that's part of change and once again is youtube it's their platform they can do what they want it's their business model and really, it still benefits me, even with all the changes. It still benefits me tremendously. So understand, when you're out here, you're looking at, hey, what you want to get into, what kind of business you want to do, do not become eBay top heavy. Do not become Amazon top heavy. Have some other horses in the race. Have some other horses in the race because what's going on? I'm t I predicted this. I told you in August this was going to happen. Something else is going to happen. You're going to hear of some large Fortune 100 Fortune with a massive layoff. It's coming. You know why? It happens every year. It happens every year. Since I was a kid, it has happened every year. 
So there's going to be a group of people out there who will not have jobs come Christmas time in New Year. A large group. It, you know, because the stock market went up 300 some points and, you know, people going like, oh, that is only benefiting a handful of people. Most people don't even have a 401k nor a stock market. It's, all, it's not benefiting the people at large. Not even close. So understand if you're selling on eBay and that is your only source of income, you should be tossing and turning tonight. You should be. Because with the heavy handedness of eBay, you could really not do anything substantial and be gone. It happened to me years ago before eBay was as crazy as it is now. They are far more difficult to deal with than uh, the issues I had with them years ago. Far more difficult. And, you know, there are people who will not speak ill of eBay publicly or in the forum because they're worried about um, backlash or, you know, being censured or being targeted. Because it's not that hard for someone to do a Google search. Oh, you're bashing eBay? And you're one of the cold eBay sellers. You're just gone. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. Not a damn thing. So while you're out there, it's picking, reselling, going to storage auctions, understand you have to have other options. It is mandatory. It is not optional. It is mandatory. All right. This is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.